guys, welcome back to Momo on the Move. I'm your host, Monica Marquez, aka Momo. So today we have as a special guest the sexy couple, Vero and Chris, Chris and Vero. Veronica is uh, another co worker of mine that works at Shock Tequila and Grill. Um, I met her like my first month here, and I decided to have her and Chris on the show because. Vero is also an aspiring actress. She just moved here from Puerto Rico a few years ago, but like this has been a journey for her. Like Vero, tell, tell us about yourself. Well, guys, my name is Veronica. Um, I moved here five years from Puerto Rico. It's been a great journey. Um, I moved here when I was 18 years old. Um, I started speaking English when I moved here. I was like, if you want something, you gotta go for it. And that's exactly what I did. And it's been a like, taking this day by day and it's been like beautiful. Yeah, also we're sipping on some Brugal here. I thought the <laughs> Bad Bunny song was fitting because uh, he's Puerto Rican, she's Puerto Rican, but he filmed this song that he that I introduced with in the Dominican Republic, in La Romana. So I thought this was a good combination. You know, he's supporting the Dominican, I'm supporting the Puerto Rican, she's supporting the Dominicans. Yeah. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Um, and Brugal is a Dominican rum, it's like the Caribbean flavor here, it's like in my blood, so we sip it on that for this show. And Christopher, Christian right here, tell me about yourself. I was uh, born and raised in uh, Koreatown, I was born and raised in LA, and uh, yeah, you know, my parents uh, migrated from Guatemala, so I'm first generation. Oh, you're Guatemala. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, uh, uh, yeah, um, you know what, uh, you know, it wasn't in my species to become an actor. Uh, it wasn't in my world. My parents just taught me. My dad, when he taught me, was soccer. Obviously, he was a professional right. boxer. And one oh, other. Yeah, yeah, he boxed like professionally. So, like, you oh. know, I grew up boxing and uh, playing soccer, right? And uh, yeah, what I can remember uh, my first language being, you know, Espanol. Mm -hmm. So, gracias a Dios, hablo español perfecto. And uh, when I went to school, I had to like adapt and learn how to like speak English. So, I had a trouble doing that. But now, now that I'm older, you know, I think it's a blessing to have no, learned Spanish and English. No, of course, because English, many yeah. Spanish descendant people, like, or they come <laughs> from Hispanic background, they can't speak Spanish. They're, they're born in America. It's like mm -hmm. out of their system. And like, I can speak Spanish, but it's not mm -hmm. the best Spanish I've ever had. Like, right. or, or the Spanish that it could be. But thank God, I you know I can I can go to VR and you know get by. Like, and, for sure, I hear you. And I have my family, and I speak the Dominican slang, like yeah. que lo que like blah blah blah. But um. <laughs> When I speak with right, like like different types of Spanish people, it's like funny to learn their dialects because right, I live right, with right, Colombians right. for my life, for sure, for and sure. it's just different than like Only sentate different. or and I was like, you mean siéntate? Like yeah, you know, sit right, down? Right. Like it's just a different <laughs> way of how they say everything. For sure. But yeah, yeah, um, I hear you. yeah. That's a good thing that you um, you know. Yeah, like, first. Hey, was that your first language you said? Or yeah, it was my first language. So um, today in life, I'm grateful because. I've been able to do uh, Spanish commercials and yeah, it's able really to do important. English commercials it's and just like I uh, audition on both markets, so uh, yeah, it's no, pretty, pretty awesome, yeah. For sure. That's why I have these two guys on the show because I kind of wanted to show the Latin actor perspective, like is it easier to mm -hmm. get more, do you land more roles because you are bilingual and you are Spanish speaking and you are from that? you know, minority, yeah. or does it become like an issue? Do you get discriminated against, oh, you're not fit for the role because you are of Latin descent? You know, I think uh, I think we get the best of both worlds, and, and like I said, uh, you know, what I've learned in the game is like the more talents that you acquire, the more chances you have of succeeding in the game. You know, for yeah, instance, like sure, sure. like I said, my dad taught me soccer, and I remember when we used to go to the park, and he used to like have me do chilenas and scissor kicks and stuff, and I used to say, Eat it like man because he's like pushing me, right. but I've done like man multiple national commercials playing soccer because of that And I've learned so today. I'm like That's I said, I'm grateful, you know, and I've done of course like English stuff like English uh, I think like a bigger percentage is English, but Spanish market is definitely big in LA So it comes in sure. handy. So <laughs> I mean Mexico's yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah it's That's very, very good cool. that now every audition is about real people and real people doing this and People that know boxing and everything, yeah. so that's why it's good that if you want to practice something, the more skills you have, it, it, yeah, be good and start like, yeah, the more the open the door you becomes for you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Beto, how was your transition? Because she's originally from Puerto Rico. Um, did you 
know any English when you moved out here to California or? Well, actually, um, in Puerto Rico, they put a lot. Uh, they put movies and like series and English and everything. But seriously, I was like, I don't have to learn English in Puerto Rico. I'm not gonna learn English, you know. So when <laughs> I you're responding to your mother in Spanish, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Why am I gonna? She doesn't understand. I refuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I moved here, like when I started, like the year before, I was like, I need to learn English because not so what is California. Like, so so um, when I was. 15 years old, mm -hmm. when I was 12 years old, uh, since I'm 12, 12 years old, I was uh, studying theater, mm -hmm. um, and then I just like got hooked, I'm like, yes, I want to have like scripts, I want to learn, like I love this, um, so when I was 15 years old, I went in a competition that it was modeling, acting, and singing, and I actually got selected to go to oh, New York nice. and compete, so it was so fun, like it was so Scary, but that's my oh, first time that I went to New York. But like, yeah, and I did a monologue, and they were giving me scholarships mm -hmm. to study in New York Film Academy. Um, and then I met with uh, one of the owners from New York Film Academy, and I did my monologue. And the day that it came to give awards and everything, they called my name, like the last name. They were like, Veronica Lopez, you won a scholarship to study in New York Film Academy. I'm like, this is amazing. So, you know, like all the doors were just opening and it was great, like crazy. So when I graduated in high school, so when I graduated in high school, um, I just moved here when I was 18 years old. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. My family's still gonna be at home. So if something happens, I can just go back home. You know, why not yeah. try it? It's a journey. And you're young, like that's the time to, you know, fail and take the chance. Yeah. And, I mean, I say it on, like for the past two podcasts, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. That's my corny saying, and I'll take it with me wherever I go because it's true. Because if you're not willing to take the, you know, leap of faith towards your dream, you're not you're not gonna make it always gonna be thinking about it too so that's when i moved here i started speaking english and like little by little i got better i was just talking to people and they're like no you say this like this you know right and then they just helped me out and then yeah it's a learning process yeah. and I, I mean immediately when i met you at my job um i was like well she's clearly not from here but like the accent i feel like makes you more appealing, compelling than the average Latina that's here in America, like me. Like I don't have really an accent, like a Dominican accent, but like, I can have it. I turn it on, on, on and off when it's convenient yeah. for me. But like I think but it's such a distinct, it. yeah, it's that's, that's such a distinguish, distinguish, distinguishing well, I guess, <laughs> factor about you, and I thought that was like Sick. probably the coolest like thing about you. And you and Harold, you both it's, are from Puerto Rico, so. yeah. It's crazy that I say that because when I moved here, I was so scared to go to auditions because of my accent. And I've met so many like people here that, that there were people so negative because they can't provide what you provide. Yeah, but they were so negative like, oh, if you have an accent, like you're not gonna make it, like you're not gonna do this and that. Oh, so and I was just like, wow, my accent lives yeah. off her accent. Mm -hmm. like, that's how she's making See, it. That's true. Yeah. So I just like started embracing it, and I feel like so comfortable now. Like I just came out of the show. I can just. Go, I do my, my accent, if you, like, if you like it, you don't, you know, but I still gonna do what I need to do right. to get there. Okay, and Chris, how did you like bring up the topic of I wanna be an actor to your parents? Cause you just uh, told me that your dad was a boxer, he was basically <laughs> pushing you to be the professional yeah. athlete. Yeah, no, uh, to be honest with you, um, yeah, I uh, think as a Latino, you know, our culture, our cultura, our heritage, mm -hmm. like, uh, that, uh, it's not in our world to act. It's, right. it's not like, oh, we're born. Like, hey, like, like my son's an actor. I'm gonna get him involved. It's I'm like first generation actor as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I'm forever grateful. I was going to school in South Central LA, which wasn't the safest school. It was Manuel Arts High School, and uh, there was like fights all the time. I used to take my video camera and videotape fights all the time. And I just just genuinely did not care about like actually working hard and graduating. You know, it just wasn't in my it just, I didn't care. So my acting teacher, I'm forever grateful, Bobby Jean at Bobby Jean's Actors Clubhouse came, you know, because he was trying to help out the community, like South Central, like he grew up in South right. Central, so he came and he did a showcase in, at the auditorium in high school, and then, uh, you know, it was just like this awesome acting show, and at the end of the show, you know, I was so fascinated by it, and he had three signing sheets, and he's like, hey, if you ever want to be an actor, come to my school and get started, you know, like you get to learn how to be an actor, how to right. get in front of the camera, how not to be shy, how to get in, 
whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember like walking up and signing up and like two of my girlfriends looking at me and laughing like, what, Chris, you're, you're gonna go? Like just laughing yeah, at me, no, right? Yeah, and I feel like there's a and different then, stigma yeah. it's a guy and just like, it's kind of and like gay, I feel like, yeah. for... Right, right, right. Yeah. Or I'm like, so what you a... watch him, Zac Efron, do what you think he's gay? I'm like, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so like I said, I got made fun of, right? And, uh, you know, maybe this is like, I was ghetto and like lost right. or whatever. This is definitely yeah. like a And uh, I, you know, I went to audition that Saturday and he was only picking 10 people for mm -hmm. that free scholarship to begin acting school for three months. Okay. And uh, believe it or not, I was like the 10th kid to get picked. We did like a commercial like scene and he really liked me, and I was like the tenth one to get picked. So that's how I got started. He, he's the one that got me uh, into acting. So I'm Bobby Man. I'm forever grateful for that. He's the one that got me into Shout acting. Out to Bobby. Yeah, he, he's the one that gave me my first audition. My first audition in life. I remember taking a bus to like Santa Monica from Koreatown, and uh, you know it was like this PSA, uh, you know, where it's basically like oh, like not a, like a lot of uh, high school graduates are criminals, and you know if you stay in school, you know like. Whatever, forgot what the PSA was about. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I, I got you know the you know the director told me what to do, like pretend like you're like running away from the bus and the cops get you and and in, like you know the announcement, whatever. And I actually ended up booking it, like, oh, and that was my first audition in life. So I was wow. super okay, excited. Look, man. Yeah, yeah, my mom, Cheers my mom. Yeah, thank you. My mom drove me to location. She was there, like, uh, and uh, I remember getting, getting being so excited, and I got a VHS copy. <laughs> that was like back in the day, like uh, I got a VHS copy, what's up, right you know what I mean, <laughs> from them, uh, and uh, yeah, so like I said, he's the one that got me involved in acting, and uh, I signed with my first agent, because uh, there's a lot of acting schools uh, that offer, uh, you know, bringing, they usually bring the agents after you've yeah, been there yeah. for a while, so it's like a showcase, yeah, like a showcase, yeah. right, but not a lot of like, acting schools do that, so I definitely highly recommend for you people that want to have to look into acting schools that, that bring in agents because right. you know they get to see you and then they tell your teacher, hey man, like man, like Momo, what's up? You know she's good. You know, she got like, yeah, you know she got a song. <laughs> bring her in, you know. And then they have you audition and you sign with an agent. So that's how I started acting, and uh, wow, it was, it was awesome. awesome. Yeah, so I'm forever awesome beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it wasn't. I wish I would have started earlier. So that's what I try to tell, like my, that's you know, anyone that's that's it is not in their world. If your parents are not used to that, if they say no, like you're gonna, that's, that's a waste of time. It's so like yo, man, like. like that. You have to be the game changer, you know, if it's in your heart and you know, like, you just have to be the game changer. You have to change the game for your family because, if, you know, if, if you don't have that support from your family. And especially with, yeah. like, such a traditional background, like, an actor, if it's not paying the bills, it ain't gonna cut it. But they gonna support yeah. you when you're at the top. But, like, yeah. in the beginning, they're like, for them, yeah. it's Are not you safe. sure you don't want to be a doctor yeah. and a yeah. lawyer? That's how it was for me, yeah. Safe. That's kind of how my parents were. My mom still, to this day... So like for me, like I'll tell you yeah. down like my beginning, like as to you know when that I decided to become an actor. Um, I was I was an athlete all my life. I played basketball, lacrosse, field hockey. I did it all. And my dad is always like he's, he's from El Salvador. My yeah. mom's a Dominican side. Okay. But he yeah. was a soccer fan. For so sure. he I was mean, like, "Mommy, you just like please play soccer." Yeah. Please, and I, like I was just so stubborn with my father that I was just like, no, I'm gonna play the complete opposite. I'm gonna play with my hands instead of my feet. I'm gonna play ball. Okay. So I played <laughs> ball, and like I played. And if you go to DR, like baseball to them, like on the streets, it's called bitia. Yeah, you get a stick and okay. you get a little laundry cap, and you. Okay. Yo, I played with the boys all my life, but like I never. No wonder you guys are good. Right? I never played. Cap. I never played soccer, and like now I fucking love soccer. Like, yeah, I yeah. wish I listened you to my father and whatever. Done it. Yeah, yeah. But whatever, I was really good in school. I played sports. I was in AP classes. But then I was like, I've always like told my parents, like, yo, I'm gonna be an actor. Like, I swear, like, I just want to be. Like, I can see myself on television. I yeah. just like to entertain people. I like to make For people sure. laugh. I like whatever. It's so silly. like. My my mom's like okay so like I did like a little modeling and acting for like the school Barbizon but like I didn't take it seriously mm -hmm. because how old were you I was like 15 16 because like I just it was mostly modeling and I was like I'm gonna do this Maybe. like yeah but good. then I realized like it all it's all hand in hand but like obviously there's a a niche that you have like you are obviously a better actor than you are as like in front of the yeah, camera yeah. like like posing it draws more your attention but then like my senior year I was like if I want to go to school for acting like I have to like be in the plays now like I have to like at least try so my senior year of high school I was basically I don't know if you've watched high school musical oh yeah so I'm basically a huge fan. okay okay thank god because I know every single song but <laughs> I, stand, though. I, know. I just 
coolest really? year. Coolest year. I love him. Coolest He's year. like my yeah. crush since like 14. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> anyway, so I <laughs> went in, uh, to audition to yeah. one of the plays and I was like, you know, these because like the theater kids just weren't like people. Like they just yeah. weren't my friends. Like I wouldn't hang out with them after school. But like, you were, like I was so chill with them. Like tomboy like, and stuff. Yeah, and, sports and, 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 and like stuff my friends, and, they just like, it would, they weren't in that realm. But like I was like, if I want to do it, I just got to try. So I did an audition and the people like that casted me, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, um, they were like, where have you been? Like, what have you been doing? I'm like, well, I've been playing sports. So like, I was like, I got the part from one of the, um, yeah, so, okay, yeah. so my senior year, I was casted in the, the play in the fall and then the musical in the spring. And then the play in the fall was like love and sh love and death for Shakespeare. So like, they kind of like, Accumulated all the best scenes, uh -huh. the love and death scenes, and sh from Shakespeare, and I played the princess. I played Lady Macbeth. Uh, so you know, there's a prince in yeah. Romeo and Juliet. They right. turned it into a princess, and I was the princess. So the so whole I, cast was you, like one to ten, like just. Of I, like, I, I was like in different lady. scenes. Like, I was played. I was Kidding. in different scenes. Yeah, I wasn't. Next time, <laughs> like, you like definitely played like, every like, row, like just. Oh, but yeah, so then I'd be like, okay, I have rehearsal at this time, but I have practice right before. So I was running from basketball practice to rehearsal, and I was like, yo, I'm literally the female Troy Bolton. Like, that's what's up. That's what's up. And then after that, I had to audition to every school that I wanted to apply to to take theater. In. Yeah. But like, I knew my mom was like, you're just gonna take theater, like, so that's why I became a double major. I was like, you know what? Clearly this is an issue and like yeah. I understand like, I get it it's like it's not financially secure like it's a very competitive industry and, like if you make it mm -hmm. you make it and you make millions whatever and mm -hmm. if you don't like shit you're a starving artist and your right. mom doesn't want to see you go through that yeah. and I understand yeah, sure. that I understand their concern but like you can't make yourself happy and make them happy you have to so I kind of did both yeah. I kind of you know did what I wanted to do I pursued theater and I you know I for all the schools that I applied to, I applied to eight or nine, and I got accepted into all of them except for my number one school, which was NYU. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to go to NYU Tisch, and that was the only school that didn't accept me. Whatever, a little salty, but it was honestly, meant to be. It was super meant to be. Yeah. expensive, and I would have been in more debt, and yeah. probably wouldn't have been able to come here to California. Right. If I was in that See, that's more the right side right there. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I took digital media management as my double major, and I learned the business side of the whole, you know, entertainment industry, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool because I was going to take psychology to kind of analyze every character that I wanted to act or you know portray in a role, and but then I was like, psychology is cool and all, but business is really where it's at. Like mm -hmm. if you can market yourself, if you know how to present mm -hmm. yourself, that's really where it, what it's, it's all about. And now mm -hmm. social media kind of makes it easier. Yeah. Cause like once you get a fan base or a following on that, right? Yeah. So I'm sorry, I just went off on a tangent. Yeah, so good girl. But like, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Um. So, what idols did you have like growing up as a, as a young actor? <laughs> um. Seriously, my my family. I feel that it's gonna sound corny, but I feel that mm, my family they always looked at Anthony Hopkins. Okay. And, um, wow, this woman that I always, like, forget. Her Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep. Oh, how do you think? <laughs> Meryl Streep? I, I'm oh. like, Marilyn Monroe, I'm like, Do oh, I know my girlfriend? Meryl Streep. Alright. Yeah, no. Don't forget to talk about how you love that. I've seen, <laughs> seen all her movies, like, it's just beautiful. Yeah, Meryl Streep is the OG. story as well, it's just, yeah. they just get going and going and going, and it's just No, no fun fact, I applied to Yale because I know she went there, she studied theater there or whatever. I was like, you know what, fuck it, why not? I'm gonna yeah. go apply. And I, yeah. I got an interview with one of the people, like I guess recruiters for yeah, you. Yeah, because you have to have an interview. And I was like, I know my grades are not all up there. I mean, I was a pretty smart kid, but like, I wasn't the smartest. And I was like, it's an Ivy League school, so I don't know how well this is gonna work. And my SAT scores were like, whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 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 I I, uh, I applied to Harvard because Natalie Corman went there. <laughs> and I applied to Pace because Bradley Cooper went there. Yeah. <laughs> so like all that like who you're like idols like you kind of try to follow in their footsteps. But yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. I Fuck never you, right? I never heard back from you, but I didn't take it as a 
denial. I just yeah. took it as like it went to their it's own. in their archives. It went to their junk mail, yeah, yeah for sure. But they didn't follow. <laughs> hey, you got you got to risk it to get the biscuit, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. What's up? What my what childhood? Uh, childhood hero? Idols. Oh man. So, especially in this career. Man, but like, honest, I mean, you can go like if it was Batman, you'll let me know if it was Batman. Yeah, yeah. I think it was it was a Batman. I mean, now that you mention it, no, it's realistically speaking, I was gonna say actors. It wasn't in my world, so like I wasn't right. you know thinking about movies or anything like that. But when I was a kid. Uh, my uncle tells me the story that I used to um. Like, you know, put on like the, you know, like a towel behind my back and I used to just run around outside and then come and they'd close the door and I'd knock on the door and it would like, knock, knock, like, like, who's there? And I'd say, Batman, let me in, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, I would say Batman, you know? Okay. But uh, when I got into acting and actually noticing when you actually get into acting as an actor, as okay. a performer, you like to view and, uh, and analyze and, and then you start learning how to like appreciate actors. I feel like a lot of people will say, man, man, like acting is easy. Like they get like paid to act. Like people that aren't performers, they do really don't know. And, and I'm telling you that because I used to be like that right. before I got into acting and I started appreciating what it is to like actually look at a script and have to memorize lines after lines. And not only that, but you have to like mentally prepare yourself to like, hey, Rejection, because that's you what it is. Yourself. Like I don't think I don't think you anyone. Have some tough yeah, I, I don't think there's anyone. Actor. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone in the world that is that that gets rejected as much as we do as performers. You know oh, what I'm saying? So you have to mentally tell yourself that. So uh, yeah, acting is not the business, man. So like I said, when I got into acting, I really started appreciating acting and performers. So I would say Leo DiCaprio, man. Leo yeah. DiCaprio to no, me is. Man. The best in the world. Well, like I said, my favorite. Everyone like likes no, people. Honestly, they dislike people. They don't. They, they dislike Zac Efron. Yeah, I'm like, I think Zac's amazing, but Leo you know, is my favorite. No, I, I I could agree. And you know what I like about Leo and what kind of you know motivates me is you know I think he's also one of the best actors, like male actors. But you know what? This man took had to make twenty. Excellent movies and the movie that I didn't even see I still haven't seen it right that he won an Oscar for like It doesn't matter how many Oscars you have to you know mm -hmm. Show your talent right, show sure, the world sure. like what you got because yeah. I feel like he, this man puts everything and his all his heart his in every heart. single yeah. performance and People recognize that and see that and they yeah, all yeah. kind of made it a joke like how has Leonardo not you know, and I, at this point. yeah, I feel like the Oscars views it like that. I feel like, uh, I think he's just like on another level to where like the Oscars recognizes, ah, there really isn't competition. He's gonna win every year, so we can't give him an Oscar. Right. You know? He's so <laughs> humble, yeah. Though. yeah. He's so and then humble. like they finally give him one. But like I said, if you ask me, every single movie that he's ever done, Oscar. Nailed it. And you I know, feel to me, so. that he really does it because he mm -hmm. likes it. So you yeah. can't even see it in the movies. It's not like, yeah. okay, like so many actors here, mm -hmm. like, okay, the money, this and that. Like, no, like he studies everything and he just puts his heart. That's why he has so, so much respect. Man. Like, I 100% yeah. agree with that. And like, you, you have to be in like a career or a job that you fully and like love. Like, why are you doing something just for the money? Because the money comes and goes. Yeah. And that's especially true for an actor because you can be making, like, a couple Gs for one role, but then you won't be seeing those couple Gs for a little bit. And you're going to have sure. to survive off those roles. So, like, I know, Christian, you were telling me that, you know, you don't really, you don't like to work. No one fucking likes to work. Hey. Like, Ain't nobody like, <laughs> I want to retire right now. I don't want to be flipping drinks anymore. Yeah. Like, but flipping drinks is fun. You get to meet people. That's yeah, why I do sure. it. But yeah. I want to be doing what I love solely. I want to be making money off what right. I love to do. Right. Solely. Like, I don't want to have to work. Right. Oh, I have the four o'clock shift. I got to go bars until 4 a.m. No, fuck that shit. I feel like everyone... Yeah. Once in a while, like like when they're young, should do it. So yeah, they so you learn you get manners it. and everything. Mm -hmm. But they should always like aim for more because yeah. I like we met so many people in our like working place that they just hate what they do and they just come and complain and it's okay. Why are you telling me this? So okay, then don't work here. That's what you want me to say. Like go and do something else. No, what are you doing to like? Yeah, to go to the next stage. Of yeah, life. like this is all you're seeing then. Then of course you're gonna be unhappy because you don't have dreams. For, like you're settling, 
and that's not cool. Like I don't, I want to be surrounded by people that they just love what they do, right. you know, and everything. So that's why it's always good to aim for more. Right. So Christian, tell me about how you're kind of surviving out here in LA as an actor. Well, he's also sad. So if <laughs> you guys didn't know this, we got nine yeah. unions and we got the sad here. Yeah. So yeah, so soon like, to be union, soon uh-huh. to be union. We're just you know working on it. We're just, yeah. we're not trying to limit ourselves yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, so like uh, uh, me myself, uh, you know, like I said, once uh, I feel like you gotta start, you know, somewhere. Like it's not like you're gonna have all the knowledge in the game. Of course. Like you have to genuinely like go through time. it, and it comes with time. Like it really does. So, um, you know, it was really hard for me to get sad personally. Like it was always a dream of mine to get sad, and I just never got a voucher because it was that hard. I feel like uh, a lot of females had the advantage back in the days. Maybe they still do. I don't know. The world's changing. But it was just like PAs, like flirting with the girls or handing out. I just genuinely went three years without, uh, you know, becoming sad. So like I, uh, I, I, uh, I got into background work, you know, when I was when I was twenty years old because I, you know I didn't have a job and I'm like man like I, how do how do I uh, how do I maintain how do I get a job? So I went to sign up to Central Casting and back in the days uh, it was two different unions. It was after and sad. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know just being brand new. Like, you know, getting back into acting because I started when I was 16, then I just didn't know what I was doing. I went and got a job at a restaurant. I was a bar back. Then I was like, I hate this. Like, I'm not happy here. So I started doing background. <laughs> and then uh, I started working on a show called American Teenager. Uh-huh. And then it was just brand new. And I was just like 18 to look younger, high school student. And then I just, like, back in the days, they would hand out after vouchers, like, no problem. Now mm-hmm. they're more like, uh, no, we're not handing it. But back in the days, I got really extremely lucky because... You know, I started working under right. after vouchers, and then eventually, like in 2011, I believe, second after a joint, which is something they had been wanting to do for years, but it never happened until finally, like, fuck it, like, boom, they they merged, and I got extremely lucky because I saved myself three thousand dollars. I walked in a SAG, I had just signed with an agent, and then I went to like uh, maybe like my third audition with my agent, and I, I booked Criminal Minds as a guest star. What? So yeah, and it was like, and I realized that oh. I realized that uh, you know just not being sad like kept me back from auditioning episodically because there's no way that uh it, you know they're gonna bring you in non-union episodically like it's just i'm you know i'm telling you because i've been in the game for a while it's just you know agents like nowadays kind of i feel like non-union's like definitely growing you know because a lot of product, production companies are are uh, deciding they're like they figured out the loophole a lot of cast uh casting agents are like no like Let's go cheap. Let's let's pay non-union for and make them sign the contract for five years. So, so do you and, think uh, that yeah. it's you know being in the game for how old are you again? Just I'm so gonna you? be 32 in July. Okay, dirty yeah. 30s over here. Um, dirty 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, question: Do you think yeah. it is better for you know a non-union person to yeah. land an agent before you go SAG, or do you think you know enter SAG on your own and land an agent? Uh, man, uh, and my honest opinion... Because that's kind of like how... Yeah, my honest opinion... But I don't know if it was different You should, um, you yeah. should be... Well, I don't know what's going to be... Because, like, I was, I'm still, like, I, like, learn new information, but, like, I don't know which yeah. is the best approach to go. I'm, I'm non-union, yeah. and I do have an agent, and my agent has sent me to auditions that are staff. So they can actually help you, right? Depends on, okay. you know, so the trials and everything. They can, like, like yeah. randomly get in a commercial that could be staff, so you can, like... Book that and be like union. No, because so. I know that as an actor myself, I only use backstage, but I'm gonna sign up to LA casting very soon. Um, yeah. I know that we only see thirty percent of what's actually out there, and right. that the agency like one hundred percent of what's actually out mm-hmm. there. But obviously, you wanna sign to an agent that's not yeah. scumbag that you know for is sure. there for you and mm-hmm. like is going to work for you. And so, mm-hmm. like, if you are telling this agent like, no, I'm not gonna just, I will never tell an agent. I will tell my de- bo- boss, yeah. like, listen, bro. I didn't audition. Like, yeah, that's you know, what you move here. Because that's what I that's what I came here for. I didn't come here to fucking bartend. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I yeah. came here to pay the bills. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is like it's getting me on my feet, but like this is not gonna be it for everything. So yeah, I wanna know like what the best approach I is. Hear you, so yeah. you're no, saying like, agent, my, agent yeah, is my, the way to go. Yeah, like, my, first, in my then, opinion, you know, I definitely yeah. say um just go all in, you know, you can't really question and hold back and and start yeah, asking well, yourself questions because exactly. you're never going to get ahead of you. It's, it's like you're right. delaying yourself, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if you have the opportunity to join or, you know, to, to sign with an agent, right. go for it. You so, know what I mean? Because nowadays it's like they're giving you 
uh, you're obviously you're non-union, right? Like you're gonna get non-union, non-union, and guess what? They're sad. They're looking for like really talented volleyball players, really talented basketball players. Like right. they don't really give a yeah. fuck if you're if you're not sad. If you have the, the talent, skill, if you yeah, have the skill, guess what? There's gonna be some. What are you get at basketball? Basketball. Bas- I'm fucking athletic. Okay, I'm not cool. boxing, so you're gonna be, yeah. I'm gonna be the next million dollar baby. Yeah. So like I said, if you but with boxing and shit, like you're good at boxing, right? They're looking for like a professional fucking boxing girl, right? right. It's a commercial. Right. It's sad. It's national, and your agent actually has the opportunity to like give get you that audition. Guess mm-hmm. what? Now it's Monica versus Veronica. Veronica is sag. Monica is not union, right? right? Really and good. then let's say that she, you guys go in, right? Uh, Monica is just a typical. L, uh, Actress girl that claims to know boxing, right? Everyone fake it till you make it, right? right. You can only do that to a certain extent. She goes in there, she doesn't know shit boxing. They're like putting her to do exercise. She looks like a complete like idiot, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Right. And then guess what? Monica comes non-union. This bitch is killing it. You know what I'm saying? She's like, bah, 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 bah. she knows, like, you know, one, one, two, three, she knows the jabs and everything. Mm-hmm. Guess who they're gonna tap Hartley? Boom, we want her. I don't yeah. give a shit if she's non-union. Boom, tap her. Now she's good. We're on LA Casting, yeah. and I recommend everyone to go on LA Casting. It's so cheap. I'm, I'm um, on the move there. That's but nice. um, <laughs> the thing is that um, when I was looking at it right now, that there's been posting like boxing and everything like yeah. everywhere. So if you know about boxing, if you know about soccer, LA you know about basketball, um, yeah, yeah like, like, everywhere. To get, to get so website, you um, have to be looking. So at like uh, for those of you guys right. that don't know. Uh, when you come to LA and you sign with an agent, you, you have to get on LA Casting, Actors Access, Casting Frontier. It's a must. So Period. All, no question. Any asked. of those three or all three? Yeah, yeah, all three of them. Why? Because your agents uh, are able to submit you your profile to, so, to casting directors. Let's say you get an agent. Let's, let's say you get an agent. I, I, I got them only through LA Casting because I do have, I did. So far, since I've been here, I've yeah. been taking this class with, I don't know if you know Mike Pointer, he, hey, I saw your commercial. Like, he's been in the business for 19 years. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, I took his course, I took both of them. Um, right. Super cheap, too, and he's like one of the really, he kind of looks like he's been teaching the NFL for 50 years. <laughs> but he's a dope coach, like, he really tells you the ins and outs of everything, because he what, himself was an actor. And he, yeah, yeah. he's like, guys, honestly, like, I know you guys want to be in movies and television, but like commercials, like mm-hmm. they pay, they pay the bills, bro. And yeah. like, they'll give you practice for, you know, mm-hmm. auditioning. Yeah. If you can land a commercial agent, awesome, because right, right. it's going to keep you hungry. Because once you start yeah. seeing the, that money, mm-hmm. you're going to want more and you're going to want to be doing it with what you actually want to do. So yeah. like, then you can get your theatrical no, agent because the commercial and yeah, theatrical agent is completely, completely different. Mm-hmm. So what I love about this guy is I already completed his course. And I just have to pay like a hundred dollar VIP membership to have him as a coach for life. So he will let me know when he has commercial showcases yeah, in yeah. front of three agents. Cool. Theatrical showcases in front of three agents. Right now, I haven't been like I can do this commercial agent showcase, but like I'm just wait. I just have to give my new headshots and like I don't want to because I don't want to give this commercial agent like a whack ass headshot. Like I want to give him a yeah, perfect resume, sure. a perfect mm-hmm. com- uh, headshot, so they have no reason because I don't want to kill it. Okay. When I do this commercial yeah. agent um, audition, but I don't want to get have them have a reason like oh she's her like because like sometimes it's, like it's the case it's like they don't like what they see right away next yeah um some, some of them they always send you as well to like get headshots. and like I don't like consider it myself but like the showcase because like I asked because I, I I did one showcase for the commercial I didn't I didn't get a call back for any of them. But also my my headshot was wag my resume I didn't really update that well I I kind of like took it for granted. But like he lets me know when the next one is, and I just gotta kind of pay for each showcase. Showcase, but it's not an excruciating amount. It's like mm-hmm. a, a fair amount. Like you're about to audition in front of three agents. Kill yeah. it. Do what you gotta do, mm-hmm. and then if you land an agent, that agent's mm-hmm. gonna book you work that that money. The thing is, I like less than a hundred bucks. So it's yeah, whatever. I feel it's good. Like, no, yeah, for sure. So that's what I like about him, and I think that was like the best step that I took coming here because mm-hmm. I got I got I started taking this class in February I got here in January and I finished both courses in like two months and you know he's emailing me constantly like about which commercial showcase which when's the next like, theatrical showcase and I asked uh, one of the commercial agents that came to my showcase like do you prefer submissions from people who submit individually or do you sub- like prefer people who are from the showcase like do you take people from the showcases more than you take from people who are submitting on their own on their own and they were like showcases for sure just because i guess because they have 
you know, like the recommendation from your coach. Yeah. They know yeah, that coach, he's that. been in the game for mm -hmm. like 20 years now. So like they know that he's not providing bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like he's providing a real deal. Like right. they, he's trained them to be the best that they could be. And if that's maybe it's not cut out for them, they yeah. get the role. But mm -hmm. I just did it as a warm up. Like I want to see how it all works. So the next commercial showcase, I expect <laughs> to have an agent. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Because that's that's just how I, that's how I speak. Like if if it's not getting spoken out into the right, it's right, not gonna happen. Yeah, so I like to course. speak it into existence, make it happen. Law of attraction, baby. And that's yes. Momo on the move. Rhonda right Burns. There. And you gotta find yourself out there. <laughs> but like that's why I wanted you guys on the show. I know you guys had some experience out yeah, there. Yeah, like, sure. I've only had the New York experience. Yeah. And in New York, a lot of my friends, like there's some of my friends that were in the uh, digital media production mm -hmm. in New Paltz where I went to school. And so I collabed with them and like, cause they wanted to film and I was like, I want to be on camera. And yeah, like, yeah. I like to learn how you film and like what you're looking for when you're filming. Cause like, I also want to like be able to direct later on. So like, you gotta yes. have like the mentality of everybody. Yeah, outside. I you need to know. 100%. And that's why I pre like I really appreciated the school that I went to because they kind of as a theater student like you have a concentration yes like if, if if it's tech or if it's performance or if it's dance whatever but they make you take every single aspect of theater they make you be work backstage they make you work costume they make you work light they make you work sound and obviously throughout those experiences you find out what is really for you mm -hmm. and what's not for you but. I was really good at construction, honestly. I was pretty good at that. Oh, <laughs> but um damn, that's what's up. But um that's not like that's I don't find like oh my god. Yeah, it's not like I'm gonna wake up yeah, and yeah, try yeah. and break this down. But like I thought it was super I, I honestly think it's 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 a fun pass. I mean like I like seeing it after like the but like, I made that <laughs> set, like that's fucking dope. Yeah. But I also want to be that actor on that set. Hey, but guess what? If they're looking for a real construction worker, oh, I got SAG it. National. That's you. Guess no. who that's gonna be, girl? That's like I said, the like more no, you like, know, the yeah, more you'll work. It helps you out. Yo, the you, more right. successful you'll I feel that you. some people, um, they like like me when I moved here. I was studying and I was like taking classes and everything, but I wasn't really putting myself out there to audition or nothing like that. But I feel like. If you've been studying and you've been like learning, you yeah. have to put yourself out there to right. see, like to learn. Because mm -hmm. it's not the same as learning and being comfortable around people and like, okay, I'm going to say like, I'm going to practice doing auditions and everything to yeah. go to a, actually to an audition and being like, wow, okay, like how am I going to like stand? How am I going to introduce myself? Right. You know? So you always have to put yourself out there and like no matter how, but you have to. Right. So... What are you guys working on now? I know, Beto, you told me that Christian is working on a book. Yeah. So, Christian, enlighten, <laughs> us. enlighten us a little bit. Yeah, no, that's a secret. I'm going to tell you. Don't reveal all the secrets. But, uh, like, yeah. I want him to come back yeah, and like, sure. promote um, it for real. Here, uh, so, uh, like I said, I'm not claiming to be a writer. I've been acting since I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 31 now. And uh, I've acquired all this knowledge. As I'm, I'm from LA. I feel Shit, like, I'm learning yeah, throughout like, the like, episode. So yeah, like, like I said, uh, I'm, a, I'm an LA native, so I feel like that's what makes me different from a lot of acting coaches or, you know, this is the technique to get this. So I genuinely uh, have befriended like most of, you know, random strangers that I've met on set. Uh, some of them have be become my bestest, bestest friends. And, uh, you know, it just uh, opened up my eyes to, to people like you guys, man. That, that come out here and make that big move it's and big uh, you know you go against family you go against like people telling you no you can't do it so I man I applaud you guys so much for doing that for chasing your dream for being different like I said you guys are the game changers so just you know one of my best friends Nico was like homeless for like a month uh, you know just genuinely moved out here from Oklahoma he's Filipino he's like trying to do it and right now he's booking left and right and I mm -hmm. prints and a bunch of stuff so like I said just being in the game for years and just seeing my friends like go through shit or seeing people that move out here, it, it uh, made me uh, just open up my eyes and one day I woke up uh, you and uh, yeah, you know, I went to, my, I went to visit my brother, my brother, uh, his girlfriend handed me a book, he's like, this is your book and it was Rhonda Burns' uh, The Secret, right? And I'm like, this, and I was like, shit, man, I, I forgot I bought that book. And then uh, I opened up a Facebook post and it was just like, a, uh, a random person when I've gotten multiple messages from random people that have uh, hey like I know so-and-so my son wants to move out there to act like what do you recommend so it just 
you know, Rhonda Burns The Secret, and then just like this random stranger's message on asking me for tips, I just yeah. decided to write a book, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, like I said, uh, I'm hoping to publish it this year, and it's I'm specifically for you, you guys. And it's, it's like, I'm I, I just, ready. yeah, it's, it's for you guys that come out here and make that big move, and just, it's hard. Like, you guys don't know how to start, like, what to do, like, you know, and it's a process. Like I said, and I, I'm, I'm putting all my knowledge in this sure, book to help, my life. to help you guys, you know, for you guys to, for people around the world that want to move out here and they just don't know how to start, they're going to read my book and it's just like, I guarantee you, it's more knowledge than anybody that comes and tells you, oh, this is the technique you got to do to book. It's all that, you know what I'm saying? Like Dude, I said, I'm an LA native and I'm putting everything down from like background acting to like booking a commercial to like what websites to subscribe to, to recommendations, to every single thing, to places to live, you know, like you don't know that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like everything being 25 minutes away from each other from... Uh, calling services to uh, you know, like I said, how to get an agent to how to maintain an agent to to what agents look for to uh, like non-union versus SAG-AFTRA, every single thing you know what I'm saying in that book for people that want to move out here to to make it easier for you guys and more wow. for you guys to be more confident. So you know what, this is how it is. This is how the game is. I'm moving and I'm doing it. Exactly so, what the new LA needs. That's what my book is gonna be. So stay tuned. You know. I am super excited <laughs> to hear yeah, all yeah. of it. Honestly, I feel like you just gave the the Mighty Duck speech of mm. acting right now. Oh, like, man, yeah. For like the new like generation. That, like and I'm, said, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. all for it. I'm about it. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait to hear, yeah. well, to read everything that you have to, Hopefully, you know, if, if God permits it, you know, I'm going to do that for the Yo. world, you know, because I, 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 I've i looked into it and I haven't seen anything like it. That's good, good. Nothing like, else. And I really, so like I said, I'm not yeah, doing it. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm not doing it for the money or like how many books I sell. Like I don't give a shit about that bullshit. I want to do it Yo, to, to touch people. Good, I want to do it to touch people, and I want to do it for you guys. Yeah, you guys no, are from here. Like I want to do it for you guys so and people around the world that want to do it. There's so, so many people yeah. that they just want to be Thank like, you. oh, like, oh, I know more than you. I want to know this and that. Yeah, yeah they but don't those really people wanna, aren't all like, come on, like, we're trying to have the work together. We're trying to like support the realest people here. Yeah. And I'm like not, I said, uh, I, you know, I'm being not about that bougie shit. Yeah, we're being about in, a humble, hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's classy. where I'm coming from. That's how I grew up. That's how I am. So, like I said, uh, being from LA and getting into acting and just being a different world to me, I realized that everyone tends to be to themselves. And then they kind of look at you like competition, or, or maybe they don't want to talk too much or say certain shit because they're like, oh no, she's going to take my job. Some people, they just think that they're going to get by just by who they know. And, and like sometimes that does happen, but like you have to be willing to make every single audition that your agent calls you for and whatnot. But I think we've touched upon every single subject possible in this little <laughs> actors 101 or latinos 101 or latinos in america or latinos coming to america <laughs> this so. was a fucking dope ass podcast i'm glad you guys were yeah thanks for having us congratulations yeah. thank you yeah. 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 i was trying to meet the right people <laughs> and you guys are fucking awesome yeah. um christian i can't fucking wait for your book to come out thank you so much i yeah. literally think it's gonna yeah. be very helpful for many actors starting now because it's kind of like a refresher for the new generation. It's not the traditional, oh, this is what you gotta do. Obviously, yes, right, those right, are the right. things you had to do, but now times are changing, technology yeah. is evolving, social media is really the biggest yeah. marketing thing, yeah. tool that you could use to get yourself to the next level. Because if you don't have the, like, uh, unfortunately, as sad as it is, if you don't have the following on those platforms, that's you're not that, I, I hate to say it, but you're probably not going to make it that far. But, you know, with the experience that you have, what you've learned throughout these years, I think this book is going to be super influential for the next generation of actors to come. And yeah. I'm super excited for you. This is awesome. Thank you, thank you. I'm all about these movements. Uh, Vero, we gotta get on the next level right here. We yeah. have, like, we have our, we have our little guru right mm -hmm. here. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you guys yeah. for coming. Yeah. We're gonna keep this uh, short event. I know yeah. it's a little long, but um, it's all good. thank uh, you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. This is Momo on the Move. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Vero. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Peace out, guys. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.